Let's talk about app layouts. Since the app builder is focused on web apps, we are offering Flex as one of the approaches to create layouts. The outermost container you see here is the canvas or viewport. And you can change the size by editing the viewport size in the properties panel. From now on, I will be referring to viewport as the canvas just to make it easier. Flex layout is available to you as a row or column layout component in the toolbox. These layout containers have built-in settings that allow us to modify the position of the nested UI elements. It's shown here as a horizontal align and a vertical align property. So in this example, I have two column layouts added inside the canvas as nested elements. Now I can change how the nested elements are arranged by changing the direction of the canvas properties from row to column and then back to row. So one thing to note is that the canvas size is only applied to provide a predictable design time experience. When you generate the app or when previewing, the canvas of viewport size is ignored to fill up all available space, both vertically and horizontally. Let's look at a more meaningful example. Here, we want the sign-in dialog to be centered on the canvas. Now to make this happen, I will use the alignment settings on the canvas to center the nested container vertically and horizontally on the canvas. For the dialog container itself, I've used a column layout so that everything stacks vertically inside it. Right now, the layout container is sized based on content, but I can always specify and height and width for it. I can also add padding property to the container and margins to relatively space out the child UI elements. And when you preview, you can see that the sign-in dialog remains centered even when you resize the browser window. You can also add existing components to a layout using the context menu, which is shown on right-click. Select both and right-click to view the context menu. From here, I'll add it to a row layout. And then, using the horizontal align properties to select the space between option. I admit it does take a while to get used to it, but having it represented visually can really speed up the learning process. Now, while we are at it, you can always select the parent UI element by selecting on the label on the child element. This is helpful when you have nested elements and you can achieve the same result by selecting it in the outline view. The other interesting aspect of flex layouts are related to grow and shrink. These affect resizing for components when the viewport changes size. Setting a component to grow will expand a container in the row direction if it is row layout or in the column direction if it's column layout. Going back to our basic example, only the pink container has grow enabled. The blue container has a minimum height and width of 50 pixels defined, but the grow is disabled, which is the default. And when we preview, as we adjust the size of the browser window, you can see only the pink container changes size. To try this yourself, you can start with one of the preset layouts when you create a new app. Here, you will find examples of layouts where we mix and match the fixed and the flexible sections. This ends our quick intro into flex layouts available in the Indigo App Builder. To summarize quickly, whatever you have already known about flex layouts can be used here in the editor as is. For someone new to flex and CSS, it'll take some getting used to, but over time, it'll become a lot easier to think about layouts as rows and columns. In addition to this, there are some great resources on the web to learn flex concepts in more detail. You have cssstricks.com, MDN Flex Topics, and if you want a more fun learning experience, you can even try Flexbox Froggy, a game-like experience developed to teach you about flex. We are also considering other layout options, so reach out and let us know what you will find more useful. That's all for now.